This breakup was the bittersweet kind, as if there is any other kind, but a kind nonetheless. And this kind fell into a specific subset of bittersweet breakup, one that is typical among teenagers who have professed their love for one another, exchanged sterling silver rings, broken heart pendants, leather jackets, punk rock mixtapes. It's falling head over converses in love at an age when we're still growing, physically, mentally, and emotionally. But more than just growing, expanding at breakneck speed, fighting ourselves at a pace that is downright alarming and which will never be duplicated for the rest of our lives. It's guaranteed that no love will last, but this teenage love feels like heroin and the brutal rush of its power, its ability to commandeer the body and the mind, and its ability to make you feel like a steaming pile of shit when it comes to its crashing end. It's not that teenage love is any more powerful than the other types of love we experience throughout our lives. It's just that we will never feel that way again, never feel that rush of addiction, the certainty that we have found our proper place in the universe, and we feel that way precisely because we haven't completed our physical and mental maturation. That's what makes it unique. That's what makes it addicting. That's what makes it so enervating when it starts and so heartbreaking when it ends. And it always ends. And when it does, what was once there, what was once perfect, becomes irretrievable. It's lost forever. Jeremy and Leslie were on the beach kissing tenderly and gently, the way a couple that is not brand new starts to do at some point before they stop kissing altogether kissing for what was soon to be the last time. It was the fact that they knew it was going to be the last time that made the kissing even more tender, as though there were memories tied up in it, as though there were regrets, not of times gone by, but of times that would never be. He could feel her face, their cheeks grazing against each other's, their tears mixing together, and he remembered how he licked them off his lips, tasting them. He tasted the salt. It was like he dipped his tongue into the expanse of the Pacific Ocean. As Jeremy sat in his dank little holding cell in Bronxville, it was like the breakup was happening to him all over again. Like he was replaying the events in his mind in technicolor clarity, not the cheap rewinding and replaying of a VHS tape, but the hyper clarity of a laser disc, right down to the depiction of the blood dripping into the sand after she left. It was as high definition as high def could get back then, before there was Blu-ray and plasma televisions. There was the clarity of regret. 